Hi all, welcome back to another episode of Seize the Bet. Today we're discussing fly strike, which is an infestation of maggots on a living animal, usually sheep, because the smell of their sweaty wool is so delicious to blow flies, but any animal can definitely be affected. And I said in all animals, uh, dogs, rabbits, goats, ugh, alpaca, everything, anyone and everyone. Predominantly what I'm gonna talk about today is how to prevent it properly. So stick around and I'll see you in just a sec. Hi guys, thanks for checking back in for another episode of Says the Vet. I'm Dr. Says. Today we're talking about preventing fly strike appropriately. Before we jump straight in, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel by hitting the emblem down below. So fly strike is a really common disease and that does not make it any less severe or any less important. It causes a huge amount of suffering and needs to be addressed appropriately. It is, however, very easily preventable if done right, but people often miss the mark. They think that they've treated their animals appropriately, but then are surprised when disease breaks through and hits them anyway. So let's jump straight in and we're gonna focus on prevention in sheep today, okay? We're gonna kick it off with the use of chemicals because that's what most people think of with prevention. But please do listen to all the points because just doing one thing is likely to not be enough, okay? You do need to be using a multimodal approach and checking all the boxes here, especially with increasingly warming weather around the world. Those high risk seasons are really getting longer and more severe. Okay, so there are a number of products out there. They protect for different lengths of time, so check the labels for what to expect. But there are a few ways that people go wrong. Firstly, if you're using a spray-on method, which most lifestyle blockers and homesteaders are, you need to understand that they are only protected where you're spraying them. You should focus it down the back and around the, the back end, around that crotch area. But if they have a wound, for example, attracting flies, or it's a particularly hot, long summer, they can get struck anywhere on the body, even if they've been protected down the back and crotch, under the armpits, belly, face, I've seen all of these. I've even seen it in ears, up the nose, inside horns that have broken. So you really need to be monitoring them closely even when they have had preventative product put on. Alternatively, there are products that you soak the animal in. Um, on farms, they'll often use a full body spray that sprays along the top and under the belly as they move through the race or a bath that they run them through to get full body coverage, but that's not easily available on lifestyle blocks. Secondly, these products should be applied four weeks after shearing for optimum wool length so that it lasts as long as it should, as long as the label says it should. And that's another really common mistake is treating them on the day of shearing. Make sure you are using a product that is still effective. Some of the older ones aren't so effective anymore. So check with the vet in your area to find which ones are still working well in your area and in your country. As I say, some of the chemical families don't work as well anymore because flies are developing resistance against them, just like bacteria, just like internal worms. They are evolving to outsmart the chemicals we have available to us. And then to prevent resistance from developing quickly on your property, on that note, we also need to be careful on how we're using the chemicals. Try to alternate products with different chemicals so that the flies aren't being exposed to the same chemical year after year after year. If you're doing it twice in one summer or if you're doing it twice in a year, that's really important to alternate what you're using in a year. So for example, some people will share and, and put on a preventative lice treatment in winter and then also do your fly strike one in summer. It's really important to make sure that those two are different products or if you're doing two in the same summer for fly strike, alternate to make sure that you're using different chemicals, okay? That'll just help to make sure that those products are available to us for as long as possible and keep working. And the final big way that people go wrong with chemicals that I see is using the wrong product to treat fly strike. Products used for preventing fly strike often do not kill maggots, let alone prevent eggs from hatching. You need to actually use a different one specific for treatment. So if you've got active disease, if it's not prevention, but if it's for treatment, your spray-ons are a little bit too little too late, okay? You do need to pop into a vet and pick up a different product. Of course, if you have a struck animal, they are also gonna need sharing, clipping around that wound, pain relief and antibiotics likely as well. So you do need to contact your vet for help there. You can yourself wash and dress the wound with some iodine while you're waiting for the vet, but you're going to need a chemical product to kill those maggots. Neither iodine, hydrogen peroxide, or alcohol will kill those maggots effectively. Hydrogen peroxide and alcohol are incredibly painful. Please don't go old school and dose them with those. Just get the vet, get the pain relief, get it done right. Right, moving on, shearing. Shearing coming into summer as soon as it starts getting warm is really important. Sweaty wool is just open buffet for blowflies. 
Sharing cuts back that risk of fly strike so massively. Some people also do a winter share and treat at that point to prevent winter lights, but that's another story altogether. And then if you have diarrhea during the warm season or a really long hot season, you may actually need to do another little share around the crotch and tail region to remove that daggy wool. Now on that note, keep any causes of diarrhea at bay. That's our next point. Watch closely, get onto it quickly if diarrhea crops up. They can get struck very quickly within a day, within three days they're dead, okay? Again, share them around the back end to remove the diarrhea stuck to that wool and treat them to prevent it. Make sure you have a good drenching program in place and keep your eyes open when the rain comes. If we have a big drought, all those parasite eggs that cause diarrhea are just stacking up on the grass. As soon as the tropical rain hits, they all hatch at once and we see these massive sudden parasite burdens and flock-wide diarrhea, especially in your hoggets and your young ones. So make sure you're really watching everyone closely during the warm season. Make sure that you monitor any open wounds closely. That's our next one. Smelly, pussy, oozing wounds are going to attract flies terribly. Any animal with open wounds or anyone who's just unwell and lethargic for another reason is not going to be able to fend off flies as well as they normally would. So keep those guys close to home, obviously treat them for whatever else is going on, but keep them close to home so you can monitor them closely and check their bodies daily. And of course, here in New Zealand, because the risk of fly strike is so high, we definitely recommend docking tails, removing those tails. There are some breeds where the breed standard says the tails aren't docked. Some of those are self-shedding breeds, but if they're not, they're going to require extra monitoring. But otherwise, ring docking is commonplace. You want to get those rings on as young as possible after allowing a few days for good colostrum intake and immune systems to develop, but otherwise in the first couple of weeks. And don't forget, this is considered a painful procedure, so if you can pick up pain relief from your vets, please do. They can inject an anti-inflammatory pain relief for you. But you can also get an oral form that you give on the gums daily before putting the ring on and then if they need it for a couple of days after. You can also pick up a numbing cream from the vets, but the benefits of the cream is only skin deep, as you can imagine. And just a few other little things. Flies like humid, still environments. If you're experiencing a high-risk season, particularly hot and sweaty, shift them onto a nice windy hill. Of course, no matter where they are, they're gonna need protection from the elements, okay? You also wanna make sure that you don't have any dead carcasses lying around the land. They're just gonna be breeding out of control. And then my final little trick of the trade would be actually to use fly traps, not to try and keep the population down, but to alert you when conditions are prime for flies to be thriving. So when you lay those fly traps out, if you suddenly start catching a ton of flies, this means the weather has just hit prime conditions, the flies are all hatching from the soil, and at that point you get your preventative treatments on ASAP if you haven't already. Research has shown that if you get your sharing and chemical prevention on early in the season, it's gonna help keeping down the fly population on your farm throughout that warm season. Oh, and then one other little thing I forgot is just a note, you can actually try and source uh, some particular sheep breeds that are self-shedding, as I've already mentioned. So those guys you don't actually need to share, and it just means that they are a lower risk of fly strike altogether. You usually won't see them struck anywhere near as easily, but I definitely do see it in those particularly hot, high-risk seasons. So you do need to monitor them, but the odds are a little bit more in your favor. Okay, guys, those are my key points there. Don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up and comment away over in the YouTube channel, and I will catch you for the next one. Cheers, bye-bye.